So um, we recorded the Fifth Symphony for a fourth time, and by the time we uh, have t- this recording released or this conversation with you released on podcast or on YouTube, probably you have heard or listened to our conversation on why we re-recorded it for the fourth time. It's definitely worth your time. It was interesting actually to uh, exchange some uh, thoughts about that. But we would like to spend a little time together with you talking about our beautiful Forte Piano, which is which receives a lot of uh, praise actually. Also from people that say like, it's unbelievable how this treble sounds on this Forte Piano, what is so different about the piano? Is it really a copy of a Forte Piano or not? And we should one day have Joris Spotfleet here in the studio to talk about this. Uh, and maybe that will happen, maybe it won't happen. So I'll ask you to start, What? because you, you, you're you familiar with the Forte Piano, and certainly with the instrument at home right now, as much as I am. Um, you started even to tune yourself, mm-hmm. because you recorded a lot of Chopin when Anya and I and the family were taking a week off, and it went very well. Um, but now looking to that Forte Piano, also in the light of these symphonies that we record, is there any word you want to say about it? And I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're smiling now. <laughs> and it's a little bit of an inside joke. It's not, I mean, it's, it's a little bit silly, but the point being is as magnificent the instrument is, it's a fortepiano, which is, which means it's not a Steinway in terms of stability. It's untunable. <laughs> <laughs> end of the video <laughs> no it's uh, uh, I guess it's normal that's why they added the, the iron bar the iron frame in the in the structure of the of the later pianos because it's uh, so it's, difficult uh, to talk about this because people even when people are familiar with uh, instrument building I mean from a sideline of a little bit they would say we had these conversations where people said yeah but you should check the tuning block and the quality I mean this forte piano is top 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 quality it's like even if you compare it to the original yeah, which I... is also in Potfliegis workshop he mm-hmm. only wanted to build a piano forte when he had the original mm-hmm. It's like the level of quality and precision is unbelievable, mm. but it's a piece of wood glued together. Huh? So it works literally. Yeah. And um, we start from the sound of the piano, maybe the quality of the. Well, those are the positive things. But just to finish this yeah. on tuning, it's it's one of the challenges to, to record. And sometimes we could record an entire symphony where the impulse you give to the instrument is really high. eh? I mean, we're not bashing on the keys, but in some terms of vibrations, the instrument is really lifting everything in in its power. And then sometimes we we don't even, I think, remember for the third symphony, I don't think we ever retuned. No. And then for the fifth symphony, it was stable for one month and it got nervous two days before the recording. And then like the treble goes down 10 cents. And then we had a hard time (laughs) in the recording. What's actually the case is I talked with this about Potvlieg and I'm absolutely not a specialist and I can certainly not explain it in English well enough. But it's like it's not only the, the, the wooden construction that is, you know, under um, it's undergoing some changes because of humidity changes, though we have everything in place that we can to, to create a stable atmosphere. Mm-hmm. But um, it's also the alloy used for the strings, which is very soft. Mm-hmm. Apparently there you have a lot of choices, even in mm-hmm. uh, because a metal from which the, the string is made, mm-hmm. they also, they, today they have special alloys which have the impurities of the alloy at the time, yeah. so the metal. So even when they... Uh, for organ building, it's the same when you have thin and lead. I mean, today it's purified. That is certainly not the right English word, but I mean, it's um, the impurities are, it's melted and then the impurities, copper and antimony is like taken apart because the industry wants pure metal, but it's very bad for organ pipes mm-hmm. because the metal is much softer. It's not, okay. it has not this life. And also the way of casting is very important. But for strings, the same thing. Mm-hmm. You can make like very, modern strings or you can have the old alloy and apparently in our piano there is this these strings are more flexible than any other type which gives an explosion of sound and also uh, the quality of the sound itself it's very peculiar 
I will say it's I, well, yeah. It's the sound of each note. Uh, there are notes who have a different uh, character or in sound than uh, so. It's very. It's uh, what's so particular about uh, about the piano as well. Yeah. So you started to talk about tuning. So that's 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 maybe the challenge. It certainly is a challenge, and certainly in yeah. a time where we want to, we have two expensive microphones, like just listening to the piano like this. Yeah. Do I hear something peeping or squeezing? One, one or string slightly is slightly uh, flatter or higher, the, sharper. <laughs> but when we connect that to the sound. Mm -hmm. What's so exceptional in this forte piano? It's not because it's my piano, but and it's not about what he made it. But he did an extraordinary job, and that's what the remark. What some people hear, they say that it's so exceptional for a forte piano yeah. to have a treble like that. Yeah, and for the Czerny transcriptions, you need a treble like that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, uh, I'm uh, overpowered all the time. Maybe not even. It's not not only a matter of decibels. It's also the quality of the sound. That treble, more than the uh, power of decibels, it has a very singing quality. It has a relatively long tone as well. Yeah, it's a very long tone, and so it gives you the impression that it's never, even when you're not playing a uh, forte or when you have like a very substantial bass and uh, that you play like it. I can I can stand that without uh, without forcing actually, because that's not done on the Viennese forte piano. You cannot you cannot go too loud. No, no. No, no, no. It's something that's also described by Hummel, I think. I think it's Hummel who said, like, yeah, if you compare English pianos with Viennese, the, the English sound louder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you wouldn't say that when the instrument is in front of an orchestra. Because of the, I guess, this frame uh, and, and the elasticity of the, of the instruments itself, like, allows you to, you know, like, it's the entire uh, frame that uh, vibrates. And so you have this uh, projection also of overtones, I guess. And it's it, exactly it comes, that. It yeah. comes all together. And, uh, and at that point, again, it's not a matter of power, but uh, the, how, how the um, vibrations uh, uh, come together gives you the, uh, the impression that it's uh, overwhelming, actually. It is. Do you remember? Yeah, of course you remember the moment where we first recorded the Fifth Symphony. Yeah. And you have this moment, I think it's in the last movement, yeah, where I suddenly have this bit. And it builds up. Uh, yeah. And it just builds up. And what happens then, I talked with Potflieger later about this, and he said, like, that's typically for these Viennese pianos. And you kill that when you add iron, iron bars, because then yeah. you kill the vibrations. Yeah, but yeah. the instrument becomes like vibrating completely. And what Czerny does there, He's, ma he's making use of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a modern piano, nothing would happen. Like there would be fortissimo all over the place. But with the Viennese piano, you start. It it comes lifts from the ground and from the floor. You have the impression of being uh, connected uh, physically to the instrument because you you start feeling like this sense of you know uh, vibrations that gets through your body. And yeah, it's uh, and it it <laughs> like <familiable>, huh? <laughs> these chords with heavy heavy chords yeah. in the bass, which are very problematic on a modern piano, but because of transparency, but also on the Viennese, you can, you can, you can also have like a very muddy sound. But if you have a good instrument, mm -hmm. it, you feel like you're constantly giving energy to the instrument, yeah. and it builds up from there. So it's never a waste of 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 of, of, of sound. Yeah, it's no. building up, 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 and yeah. it's not necessarily louder. It's like overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say that the reason why I asked. I mean, Potflick, this was his, his first forte piano. Eh? I know, I knew, and I, I mean, obviously I know him very well, but I knew that he was for 20 years studying forte piano. It's like in the same line as, as clavichord building, he has a lot of friends in, the, in the, the field as well. And he, I actually asked him to build a forte piano for Beethoven as a reason why he accepted because he would, I think, never build a five octave instrument. He would be not competing with his clavichords. Yeah, there. of course, of course. But um, I asked him because I was very curious to see what happened when you have the same quality of work as you have, is necessary for a clavichord to mm -hmm. put into a forte piano and especially the projection of sound. You talked about that, but that's typically for the Potflieger clavichords. Mm. They sound louder typically than most other instruments. It's, it's just a fact. And 
the loudness, the decibels is not so important. You feel as a listener when you are even 20, 30 meters away from the instrument that the sound really comes arrives loose, to you. Yeah, arrives yeah. To you. It's great. And it's the same principle with organs. Mm. New organs oftentimes have great sound, but the sound remains in the organ. Mm. And you have some instruments, and what you did in the Leuven instrument proved this as well, the sound really comes from yep. the instrument. Yeah. And this is so essential as a musician, mm. because you do something and you, the sound is there, it's out of the instrument. Yeah. And he succeeded in doing the same thing in the Foti piano. Mm, yeah. He applied the same principles there. Yeah. And that's what we experience. Absolutely. The other thing is that uh, uh, reconstructing, uh, playing these transcriptions on what could possibly have been a, an instrument where they played uh, these four hands uh, uh, transcriptions at the time, we just get familiar also with the, but that's all for the entire music that we play on the piano, like with the precision of touch that uh, the, the piano asks. It's not that you can uh, just uh, play however you want, like as a uh, modern. It's not that easy, and uh, and the piano is very has a beautiful sound, but it's also very demanding on uh, how you should uh, you know give an input in terms of articulation and uh, etc. It's in a way really unbelievable and. I recall now when we started to do the fourth recording, the first thing mm. I, I sent you a WhatsApp message, like yeah. we have to agree upon how do we release the first notes, like mm. pom, 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 pom. Mm, yeah. we can do it with like a kind of sticky approach that yeah. really hard or release, but with a not, not a relaxed wrist, yeah. of, but I mean, the nuances I cannot even describe, but the sound on the piano is like, Releasing, I'm not even speaking about the the attack of the note, mm. the release of the note yeah. changes completely the character of the yeah. sound, yeah. changes completely the character of the piece. And now you you can say like, now you're ex exaggerating, it's not, it cannot be that important. It is, it is. that important. On those instruments, uh, like the, um, the clarity of the, of the touch is essential. And the ways you're exposed uh, all the time, the moment that you do that you do something that it's, or at least the, the moment that your intentions are not clear, in terms of attack and release, you you hear that immediately. And uh, there's no way in between. The instrument saying yeah. that regard is unforgiving. And you are a little bit spoiled now by playing on a fortfully piano for a little bit <laughs> because also there the precision is unbelievable. And I mean. He didn't compromise in any aspect. Yeah. And I'm not saying that other bills are com compromising, but sometimes you see also adjustable screws here and there. I mean, for the dampers, for the for the keys. I mean, the keyboard actually is very hard to adjust because mm -hmm. there is nothing to regulate. Sometimes mm -hmm. builders build that in at the back of the of the keys just mm -hmm. to give a little, which makes sense. Yeah. But um, he, he refuses to do that because his philosophy is like, you start compromising somewhere and where does it end? But also, if you go like five, ten years later, mm -hmm. if you play on the Frenzel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you start to lose this precision yeah. already a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And the Fritz copy is very close. He was working in the workshops of, of uh, Walter. So the way of... It's a very conservative, old-fashioned piano for the mm -hmm. time. And you also have this feeling uh, when you play it of direct contact with the, with the string. Well, if you would play the clavichord, you wouldn't say it would that. Be, it, will, it will be like, uh, yeah, but uh, you know, coming from a modern piano, of course, uh, the feeling uh, is, is that one. You still can apply the same principles on the Viennese and um, in general, I think. It, it's an inst you start to lose that when, you, when, when people added iron bars. I'm not saying those pianos are worse. Mm -hmm. It's just you start, you, you enter into a different universe. Yeah. And this may be not by accident that Chopin went for Playo when mm -hmm. he was in Paris because they, they seemingly had like still a little bit of these qualities in touch. Yeah, the light, uh, light, uh, light yeah. touch, yeah. But yeah, that's that's also for another time. Where so, you actually have to make your sound and you're not uh, facilitated by any technical uh, development of the, of the modern pianos, yeah. A question, if you go back to the uh, transcriptions, we have now done eight symphonies, preparing obviously the ninth. Have you ever had one moment where we had to fight the piano? 
I mean, in terms of it wasn't delivering it, the transcription. Ever uh, and uh, when uh, we had something that was not working, most of times it was our fault. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I wouldn't say that the instrument or the, the transcript, the transcriptions are made uh, in a way in a perfectly. I would like, say perfect. They're just stunning. Yeah, but like it, it, it's not. A, I don't know other transcriptions of the. There are many transcriptions of the symphonies, and I don't know one that it's so well made as the, the the ones of Czerny. Even he, when he transcribed later, like like Mozart symphonies, there are the great transcriptions. But here, there is something. Or Haydn trans, uh, symphonies yeah. are transcribed for four hands. But this is like he uses the entire six octaves. It's also made for six octaves, though he definitely yeah. had a six and a half octave because sometimes you have an E in and the, you forgot to really do you it. Have a, you have the Contra in the seventh symf uh, symphony. Yeah, I, that's, I don't know which yeah, symphonies, but once there. in a while you have an E or something that, and in the repeat it's like you don't have the octave anymore, it just mm -hmm. leaves out the, the lower octave. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's definitely made for a six octave piano, but it's just stunning. Like oftentimes we are like, you are playing the treble and the uh, the tenor and I'm playing mm -hmm. the alto and uh, it's like in a way unbelievable. But it's the art, uh, if I would point to some master of uh, like art of transcription from orchestra to piano for hands, that's, that's definitely a good example of what... Uh, you know what do. Czerny answered when he was asked the question why he was so, so fast and so, I mean, so good in transcribing? No. I had lessons with Beethoven. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He literally pointed to Beethoven as his teacher for this. Mm -hmm. And that's such a different perspective of view on the person we have today. Mm -hmm. If we yeah. talk, you talk to a regular, I re recently was talking about our project and saying also Bach Czerny, metonomization, was a harpsichord player. She was quite on an age. I cannot blame her. I mean, she was like, you are calling the name of Franz, you're speaking the name of Karl Czerny out loud. <laughs> but it's so strange that he got his name. He did incredibly star. He did, I mean, he also wrote those etudes that people had to play much too fast. But if you go to the field of transcription, he was unrivaled then. Huh? Yeah. When Beethoven had, I see his letters. Guess so what? what we, guess what? List uh, did after. You, uh, you played some list transcriptions of Beethoven symphony, so you told me that it's it resembles. Yeah, I, I mean, you can you can tell that there is a, a line of tradition that uh, connects, and how surprising is that? One studied uh, with with Beethoven, the other one studied with uh, the student of Beethoven. Uh, there's definitely something that connects, uh, and then Lise is and became famous anyways for doing uh, all sorts of uh, yeah. transcriptions of uh, even uh, operas, uh, symphonies, and uh, uh, Schubert's uh, lead, and uh, and the quality is there. And by the way, his transcriptions, I mean lists. If I'm, I'm quoting from memory, yeah, but I think they're around 1863 or something. Mm -hmm. There is a letter. To his, to his publisher. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jenny died in 57 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I guess. And he said, like, please send the transcriptions first to Moscheles because he's most familiar with the symphonies of Beethoven. I would like him to check if I've met. Probably when Jenny would have been alive, he would send, have sent them to Jenny himself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the output of Czerny is incredible. Yeah, but he recently sent me a letter uh, of... Uh of list to to Chen inviting him to Paris to I don't know if you remember uh, that one it was it's in the catalog of uh, list letters were like uh, okay he was still uh, very young but like it's the uh, people say, yeah, Czerny, like uh, whatever. It's the stupid guy who composed. Not, not, recall. Not, to, yeah. not, not, not particularly to Franz Liszt. Not particularly to him. If you read that letter, you see like uh, the utmost respect that. Uh, probably he apologized the, if I remember well for being so late in yeah, his replies. Yeah, something yeah, like uh, that. Uh, as well. So it's not that uh, maybe for us today, Chen is not important, but at that time, especially to people like, uh, like uh, Liszt, um, mm, 
Okay, it was his his master, but uh, he, he was not the only one acknowledging the the importance. Of, no, 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 no. Cherny was Cherny was a really big. Certainly, name. starting from yeah. uh, from Mosh less yeah. uh, and, yeah. and and to many many others. It's we should dedicate maybe also a talk about Cherny and about his transcriptions because the quality of those. But if you go back to these transcriptions on that piano, we have. Uh, and answer my own question also, like, did I have ever some struggles? It seems to be the perfect piano for it. Yeah, yeah. It just seems to be the perfect piano to do it. Yeah, it's, uh, of course, it's not easy. It's not well, an easy we piano. Have a, we, <laughs> it, has, it has a character. Huh? We, yeah. we, we, we we still struggle to uh, call it a her or a, a, a Mr. or Mrs. Huh? It's so. Mr. or Mrs. Yeah, <laughs> it changes. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes with the tuning, as we started to talk about uh, at the beginning of this conversation, it's uh, it's hard. I mean, definitely when you well are in a big room in a hall, those uh, those things are passed unnoticed. I mean, when you sit 20, 30 meters from an instrument like that and some notes are out of tune, it doesn't matter. But of course, when two uh, German microphones are listening like from two meters distance, yeah. It makes our life sometimes. I yeah, mean, and it, it needs to be well tuned, of course. And then we come back to our conversation that we had about why we recorded it the fourth time, and your actually your explanation of why practicing with the metronome it came in so handy. How many times in the first movement of the fifth, the piano had really a cold. Yeah, yeah. We had to stop every five minutes, and yeah. of course, you take the metronome. Recording like that is uh, really like a, it's really really a pain. It's uh. because it it constantly brings you out of your concentration, but you have the certainty that we stick to a certain you tempo lose, you and lose focus, and then you have to yeah, yeah it's. Uh, and also, there there are some times with the forte piano. I think it's in general I, I don't know if people talk about it really freely because you know we're, we're still in the hip world where we have to fight the Steinway but guys a Steinway is if you want to have a piano that's stable that never let you down that you need to tune once a year definitely don't go for a forte piano yeah. uh, there's there is an evolution in piano building and the instruments not only got worse yeah the damping system of this piano, I cannot blame Potflieger for it, but it's like a, from, from as, a, as primitive as you can have it. Yeah. The Frenzel is gold standard compared to the Fritz. It's 10 years later. But if you change that, you change the weight of the keys and you lose your precision. Yeah. And so sometimes I have to take a little knife to roughen up the, the leather on the dampers mm -hmm. and hope that it damps well again. But sometimes uh, we also had uh, like uh, in the last movement of the eighth symphony, that's the perfect example where we reach really the limit of yeah. the speeds of the in, da, 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 tam, in, tam, in a whole beat, uh, not in, single, in whole beat. Uh, Eight or nine notes a second, eh? sometimes yeah, in something, repeats. Something uh, like that. And it's incredible that uh, Whenever you are not precise with a tempo and you go a tiny bit uh, uh, faster, then uh, there, Im you immediately meet the wall of the instrument that says no. Yeah. You cannot like, uh, for example, when you have some repeating notes uh, or we have to switch uh, hands and you have to leave a key and I, and I have to play that uh, right away immediately. If we are a little bit uh, too fast, uh, immediately the instrument says, no, there is a, there is a wall. You cannot you cannot you cannot do that. And uh, and most of the times when we check, uh, when we check, uh, it's um, yeah, it's because uh, certainly in that piece. Huh? Yeah, certainly in that this, piece. This this uh, just to say that uh, at the time it was all possible because they had a lighter instrument. Well, it's a no-brainer, <laughs> but of course that's, that was it's related to the to the, the it's. I mean, I give a fortune for people to play these transcriptions. Yeah, a single it's a, beat on it's, that a no, it's, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer, but uh, it's something that I've been uh, told many times. Also, by it's uh, all possible uh, on the forty. By, by uh, even um, conserva uh, conservatory teachers, it's all possible because of the lighter instruments. Then uh, I'm sorry, but uh, you never uh, played uh, extensively. Then long. we should play on the clavichord. Yeah. That's the lightest <laughs> instrument of all. Yeah, space shuttle there. <laughs> right there so no action so repeat unlimited repetitions yeah. yeah so there is no possibility and mark my words you can challenge me as much as you want that these transcriptions will be played ever in single beat never 
Never. Ne never. Never. On a forte piano, I would even go as far, but I cannot because I'm married to bet my house for it. <laughs> the thing is, if you come and try, guys, if you listen, then you have to bet yours as well. I mean, nah, yeah. Have, have, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of joking, but it's, it's not a joke. It's like sometimes on the limit, like you said, the yeah, instrument yeah, no, puts no, no, a no, limit no, no. there and Cherny uses that. Yeah, and uh, you always have to be aware of the, um, of that because the moment that you cross the line, uh, the instruments no, doesn't doesn't yeah. work. So yeah. Yeah. it's uh, and, and there when you have such experience, you start understanding uh, really what they meant when they when you read some uh, descriptions like this is fast, uh, uh, this is extremely fast, or 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 not. I mean. Uh, when I play the, the hammer clavier there, in whole beat on that piano, it is actually really, really, really on the limit. It's hard, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then leaving the pedal home, eh? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, this yeah, Mr. That... Beethoven and the Adagio. It's the last chord, if I remember well, in the hammer clavier's Adagio that has a pedal marking. In the fugue. <laughs> oh, the fugue. In the fugue. <laughs> it's what unbelievable. You, after after 20 pages of fugue without... Like, uh, without guys, I, how clear can you be that you want, don't want people to use the yeah, pedal? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. give it at the end when, yeah, yeah, when it's yeah. not necessary anymore. Yeah, yeah, or at the beginning, the first in the first uh, measures of the of the first movement. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's that. So. But pedalings, we are going to we going to hammer this because it's not an easy topic, and it is also not a black and white world. Sometimes mm -hmm. there is, I mean, there is an interpretation, whatever. But in general, people are also playing on piano fortis with much more pedal than in those days where was was used. Yeah, absolutely. And guess why? It's your accelerator. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just your accelerator. You can leave the key much earlier. Yeah, yeah. And, but we were talking as I, about as I've been told, uh, use a little bit of the pedal on uh, uh, on the on the forte piano because it enriches the quality of of its tone. But we were talking <laughs> about the quality of release in the Fifth Symphony first notes. Mm -hmm. All of that goes away by depressing the pedal. There is nothing anymore. It's, like no. wah, 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 wah. it's, it's just no, no, all no. one mess. And of course, when you speed up that much, that's what happens. And so it's up to musicians to do what they want to do and how far they want. And of course, we've been throwing the, 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 the label dogmatic a lot of times because we want to stick to the score. Oh, how, how strange is that? We're going on stage like, hey, the score is everything. The musical score inside the score is yeah. even, even, even a channel that goes like that. Uh, and up to the moment where you say, "What? Well, let's take really, the score. The, let's really dive into that, and uh, let's see what uh, what we actually see written." And then, no, and then a forte piano is like <laughs> unbelievable tool. You don't fight it. You try to learn how to how this connects to and to Czerny's transcription, which has every detail written in, articulation, everything is there. You don't have to think. There is, yeah, here and there, we have some differences in pedal markings that we have to correct from the left and the right uh, player. But other than that, I mean, obvious mistakes. It's such a precision that if you just take it seriously mm. and you don't go into that, yeah, obviously he meant pedal here, obviously this must be legato, this cannot be legato without then you have such so many things to learn from both the transcription and the forte piano and then it comes together i will say it's obvious only when you don't want to challenge your uh, uh, preconceptions of what legato is friends i mean there are there are so many directions you have to just reinvent find new and at the end you say oh yeah. this actually and then suddenly the result comes we listen to the recording and I say, oh yeah. But it's the same for it. This applies to everything. How many times did I hear in conservatory? Yeah, these fingerings, you know, they don't do them because at this speed they, they are just not possible. And there's really in that in that moment there's no something that uh, sounds an alarm bell that sounds in your in your head that you might be missing something. Maybe your tempo is wrong and the fingering is right. 
or ornamentation you're the same thing there yeah you cannot do it here a full full ornament because yeah you don't have the time because the tempo is too fast yeah but maybe the tempo is too fast yeah my, once i asked her what was the answer i asked her how do you play i, I mean it's often described that these appoggiaturas you play them on the beat how do i play in uh, in uh, i i struggle to to play them uh, in this tempo yeah but uh, you know we shouldn't be dogmatic <laughs> and then uh, then uh, what i uh, what was then, really uh, an answer you got yeah then uh, what uh, then uh, i mean i didn't ask the follow-up questions but my question uh, would have been like that then, would be uh, another podcast yeah my, my new question would have been like then why am i here And there was silence. I'm really. F- I didn't. I didn't ask, but uh, it's uh, the, the immediate uh, uh, follow-up question. I mean, there was silence here. That's for me. Like, <laughs> you don't have a conversation then. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it's, uh, I could give an answer. Would 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 go into this uh, direction? Other you, video. We will have other videos. If you don't this. have answers, <laughs> there is silence, or just for someone from your position to just not ask the follow-up question it's like i'm sorry yeah <laughs> we are far from our beloved piano forte with this but it leads to that and it's unbelievable how fascinating it is when you just take a step back allow yourself to be challenged i mean how many times did you challenge well me? also because yeah but also because i mean I, I can tell you my experience coming from the mainstream world very often when we play works uh, of beethoven mozart uh, chopin uh, or you know haydn classical composers very often uh, in order to uh, give a, a sort of um authority 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 or uh, to the um, to the notions that uh, we we have to learn uh, especially in terms of tempi say you know probably this was the tempi uh, were the tempi because not only those metro numbers there are always there in the corner we don't talk about them but when we have to point to faster performance i'm here ready using to, them. to to shake them out uh, out uh, in the air but also the instruments say uh, you ever played uh, have you ever played on uh, uh, those forte pianos have you seen uh, how light they are probably this allowed them and that's why they were described to be to be such a virtuoso because you can also like uh, reach those and uh, make runs and uh, speeds that uh, on a uh, modern uh, uh, modern piano uh, you cannot reach uh, because yeah modern piano is uh, is um, uh, heavier and my question is, uh, follow-up question will be always like, I guess that's why we have the double escapement. <laughs> <laughs> so, and but that's uh, t- since we talk about the instrument here, like okay, let's let's talk really about the experience of recording uh, those symphonies on a on a light uh, on a light instrument and a fast instrument and let's see what what's the outcome in speed how everything is possible absolutely uh, and just to, to 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 close i mean if you want to speed up from the tempi we're taking now which is beethoven whole beat i mean you can have a discussion the journey want you to play that yeah that's why you mark the pieces with the metronome marks i mean come on it's the obvious and you have to convince me you can only convince me from that when you have the letters of journey saying i published the metronome marks there do not follow them but other than that, you speeding up would mean on the forte piano with the sensitivity that we are playing on to fall into the keys in such a brutal way that not only and we come back to the beginning of the conversation, you will have to tune really a lot, but the sound would go and be gone. You have to be gentle with these instruments. They, they don't know. allow you to be brutal. Hummel describes it literal. Mm. You don't have to bash the keys. You cannot. They don't need that, but you cannot. And you would have to, how many times you have to take complex chords by jumping an octave and you can only, you cannot prepare yeah. them anymore. Mm. And so the instrument would completely be obliterated when you do that. And so 
up to a point that I can even see Potfli uh, throw those musicians from his instrument. I mean, I'm I'm ridiculizing a little bit, but it's true. It's sometimes on the edge that I ask you, give me a little bit of time because I have to prepare this chord because other the sound is like bah. We shouldn't talk about the time that we had. Uh, and of course, we don't make names, but uh, like a uh, host musician who tried the. Like but, a, but but uh, people yeah. want to say like oh for the piano it's louder than a stang it's faster than a stang the thing that your your teachers are I'm one, sorry one of, but from my world this sounds very much as an inferiority complex I I don't want to be too hard on this but it really but it, Alberto, is something that I already heard in the in the past eh? we can make a podcast on this <laughs> but that's what it is okay you tell me i, I don't have world. that it's not mine. i have no problems to say your technique i i mean technique in terms of numbers of notes of per second and complexity i'm no match for you mm-hmm. i my world ends with beethoven maybe some chopin and you feel you have to practice like in a very different way if you mm-hmm. want to go further mm-hmm. maybe some brahms or schumann but you play like crazy stuff and there comes a forte piano player Mm. I'm sorry, but there is no match. And at the beginning, the pressure of the mainstream performers was like also un. It, it was not friendly, huh? Eh? Mm. They were saying like, huh, those guys think they can play." I can totally see that. There is still a and it bit comes uh, from that perspective. There is still, still with some people, some generations, a pressure like I have to prove myself that I am a virtuoso. And partly that's the, that's the reason why many forte piano players play so fast. They are constantly in a fight with people like you, and they uh, don't as win if the they battle. They have something to prove. Yeah, but I, they, I could, there's something going through my mind, but I'm not saying it for maybe there are some <laughs> children listening. But you get my point. It's so baked in into this culture that most people don't even see it anymore. And moreover, that some of your teachers even in the past refer to that. Yeah, we know that those instruments allow faster performance. No, it's what the hip people always said, but it's not true. It doesn't <laughs> yeah, make it's, sense. Uh, it's a little bit... Uh, the uh, fastest performance a, of the Hamiklavier Sonata are not made on the forte piano, eh? No, 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 no. And it's also like when uh, when they say you know like uh, for the genetics or any to excuse of any match fast match on number yeah you know like uh, those uh, were uh, because of like instrument okay where are the recordings on forte piano that demonstrate that where are they <laughs> Just go on <laughs> YouTube and and search for the Elkenig, yeah. In in the, in the and and on I mean, the, the modern. I mean, El Elkenig is like uh, on on. For the piano, impossible. On, for the piano, it's like a nine eight nine repeated. I believe. But go and see and watch the video. Repeated octaves for pages for like for uh, ten uh, for. Ten exactly. Minutes. So watch the watch the video and just see what the pianist Dutch does. He doesn't release the keys. He's making use of the well-regulated uh, double escapement. That's that slow, the, the today famous provides. slow double escapement. <laughs> Do that on my error and you will have problems because it's not so precise. And, a and that's 1866. It's very close to what came like the prototype oh, of the... Uh, it, it makes your life much easier yeah, in yeah. terms of speed and repetition. But it's not a Steiner, yeah? No, absolutely so you can but even today you need the the best regulated uh, Steinway. it's not that if you take a, like a low quality modern piano you can uh, you can still do that eh? no. what's the what's the limit on uh, modern pianos like uh, eight and nine repeating notes it depends uh, second, I, it depends what kind of perspective you take if you read the hip people they will say like it's exactly the same as for the pianos i'm not kidding you huh there's a book of skofronek uh, well, using his, his research in, in the book, I mean, he says, like, we we, we check the re- repetition speed between English, Viennese, for mm-hmm. the pianist, and the Steinway. The Steinway has 8.1, I believe, notes per second. Mm-hmm. And surprise, surprise, the Forte Pianos have 8.2. Okay, but it's not correct. Surprise, surprise! Ch- Cherny still gives twelve repeating notes oh. <laughs> per second. No, no, in, in, <laughs> surprise, in, surprise! In the book, it goes even worse. I mean, that's <laughs> off topic a little bit, but they, as Skofrenek points to to the to the cello, cello sonatas to have the fastest repeated notes. So there's the limit, mm. and he points. I think it's top is five, number two, or something. Mm-hmm. Number, but he doesn't give how much. 
Mm. And it's clear from the book there is a paragraph missing. Sounds like a conspiracy theory. No, no, but guess <laughs> guess what I've done in the book? Yeah, I've, well, I've done his job. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many repeated notes per second in single beat? Uh, 13, 14 or 13.2. That's my whole point. If you do research to which instrument, by the way, eight notes per second on Steinway is bullshit. It goes to 10, 11. Archerich matches 11 notes per second in the Scarlatti. That's in the middle range, granted, but you will never do that on a 40 okay. piano. Out of the question, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. The key need to be, need, need to, the, the hammer need to be fall down, and then you have another release. But I mean, if you research that, and you come to the notion, eight points, and then you say the fastest repeated notes per second is in that piece, means you have calculated the number of notes per second yeah, yeah. why not give it to your audience because it shows the problem <laughs> exactly and do i blame someone like skofranek hell yes you shouldn't publish something like that no because it's so easy to show that you know and you hide the information because you fear your position mm. you are questioning something of which you know that it shouldn't be questioned we're going to question that. But we are far away from the piano forty now, and actually we aren't. It's far but connected uh, yet. It's, it, went, it went to a nice direction, this conversation, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, basically you can talk forever about these kinds of stuff. Huh? I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. and people say you're a conspiracy theorist. No, I mean, this is no, a but real... It's also to say if you hide information like that... It's not a theory. You no, are conspiring. But it's with other also people. to say, like uh, people often say, yeah, we understood tempo, tempo, tempo. But you can also stop uh, because, uh, okay, we, do we want to stop uh, talking about tempo? Let's talk about uh, uh, what we can do with the instruments and let's talk about uh, some of the problematics that we have with those instruments. And guess what? Uh, we fall back to the same uh, topic. If you don't accept, uh, uh, if you don't accept uh, the existence of whole beat, you'll have a thousand of things that you cannot explain yeah that's it one of the next video series and that's really to close will be uh, a follow-up of the Czerny Bach inventions will beat Katsaris with Beethoven which is stunning <laughs> yeah what he does on the piano is like no, no, right. it's, full admiration yeah, it's like it's unbelievable like... <laughs> and in some instances he reaches single beat which is great because it shows that he tries yeah, yeah, and then people will say yeah but if he just would want it to play no 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 no, no. he no. tried and the second people said, yeah, as if Liszt indicated those pieces to be, and of course he was, and they were intended to be played a tempo. He just cannot do it. When they say, yeah, he just uh, repeated them, the metro numbers of Beethoven, uh, which is, I mean, uh, yes, he repeated the metro numbers of Beethoven, but uh, it's not that he put them, so you don't have he to. He didn't make fall. a transcription in which you can obviously not reproduce them. Uh, reproduce and them. in the case of Chen, is out of the question with his quote, like the slightest deviation of time destroys the entire composition. Yeah, yeah. Means that if he makes a transcription of Beethoven symphonies, which for him probably was the highest, I mean, he was closest to Beethoven probably of all. Eh? Yeah, yeah. His entire life, Beethoven, Chen, Chen was one of the few that he never had argue, uh, uh, arguments with. Eh? He was there all the time. Mm -hmm. And he would transcribe Beethoven's music in a way mm -hmm. that you have to change the tempo by which he would say, like, I'm destroying Beethoven. No. I mean, how That's far... That's coherent. <laughs> how far do we go? have to go to, I mean, to bring logic to all of this? So, anyways, all to say that we enjoyed our time with the symphonies, not only, but also with this piano. It's unbelievable. It's uh, something Those that's... golden legs. It is. <laughs> and the tuning and all the squeezy things and the squeezing and the, the peeps and the things that we have to make and fix. And uh, we fix it and we Dumping make it. Dumping system. Yeah, it's it's part of it. I mean, it's... it. But once it works and it most of the time is just working and i mean the tuning sometimes and it's winter now so uh, yeah, not saying it's, that uh, it's something bad on, the, on an instrument it's just it's something you have to expect except but once it's done we have uh, we many times have said to each other like aren't we uh, shouldn't we be thankful just to be able to play on that yeah, instrument? Yeah, this music no, it's no, 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 unbelievable it's, so um, i don't know when you will be listening to this maybe in the uh, stream 
of time for the release of the Kickstarter or for the Beethoven recording, Fifth Symphony, then maybe there's still time to go there. And uh, we are making up the plans to do that in January, We're recording this now 18th of December. So it's 30 minutes before our patron hangout. So we have to... Uh, Hola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we, were, we, we talk too much. That's yeah. what Anya always says to me. But um, anyways, guys, um, it's not all fixed by the time that we are recording this. So maybe some strategies will change. But anyways, check the description box and see what links are there. Because uh, next year will be very, very cool. We are going to release a lot of recordings. Yeah. And every two months, if we are able to do that and by that pace we are already covered until 2025 so uh, we have a problem that we should invent some more opportunities for releases and that might just happen um, it depends all on your support and uh, how enthusiastic you respond to these releases and i'm looking forward to that and i know that exciting. you're the same okay yeah. thanks for listening or watching see you soon again bye bye guys